Good morning, and thank you for joining me today, February the 16th, for a few thoughts on Jesus the Good Shepherd. Today's Gospel is John chapter 10, and I will be reading the first 18 verses. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not know his own sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. The wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for his sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will hear my, listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. And for this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Now, the comforting picture of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is a familiar one. But in these verses, Jesus says that he's not only the Good Shepherd, but also the gate. So what is he referring to? Well, shepherds often far from home would build temporary kind of C-shaped enclosures made from tangled thorn bushes and branches. Now, the space was left to get the sheep inside at night. And then the shepherd would lay across the opening, putting himself between the sheep and the threat of potential danger. He quite literally was the gate. Now we have this common misconception that sheep, well, you know, they're not the smartest creatures, but they actually have wonderful memories and they would know and trust the voice of the shepherd. In verse 16, Jesus says, he has other sheep that also listen to his voice, that he will add to his flock so that there will be one flock, one shepherd. What he is saying is that everyone, Jew and Gentile, is included. Now this idea was divisive among the Jews. Some thought he was out of his mind and others thought, these can't be the words of a demon. But John is also the only gospel that quotes John the baptizer as saying, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world in John 1.29. John recognized Jesus as the only one worthy to forgive sin. Now Luke tells the story of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem, where his first visitors were the shepherds. Now we tend to picture them as these dirty, illiterate men and wonder why God would have chosen them to be the first witnesses. The Mishnah was a set of documents that recorded ancient Jewish traditions. It states that it was expressly forbidden to keep flocks in the land of Israel, except in the wilderness. So who are these men tending sheep so close to the town of Bethlehem? Well, the thought that they were the priests whose job it was to care for lambs that would be used for sacrifice during Passover or other Jewish ceremonies. Now the angels tell them that they will find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Now why this detail? Well, swaddling cloth 
was not an ordinary blanket that perhaps, you know, Mary had brought with her. But this would have been the kind of cloth that the priest used to wrap the young lambs and they place them in a manger to keep them clean, free from blemishes and harm until they were ready for sacrifice. Now these priestly shepherds would have clearly understood the significance of what the angels were telling them. And so they eagerly run to meet this small savior. The imagery of Jesus as both lamb and shepherd is a reminder that the one who tenderly and lovingly watches over us also understands our vulnerability and fears. See, Jesus willingly puts himself between us and the things that could harm us. But the Good Shepherd promises abundant life filled with things that will feed and satisfy our weary souls. What a beautiful example of God's love. May you know the voice of the Good Shepherd and may you find comfort and peace from the chaos of the world around you and rest in his loving arms. Amen. Stay safe. God bless you till next time.